What's up guys, this is Skytech Freak and today for you I have the video review of Android 9.0 Pi or Android P running on the Mi Mix 2. So as you can see this is a Mi Mix 2 and uh, I've actually been trying to get a video up about this phone running Android Pi for a while now uh, because I think it's been a month now since we've been able to do that. Earlier we could do it by booting a uh, a semi-generic uh, system image or a semi-GSI because this phone has unofficial treble support so what that means is basically you could have booted uh, essentially a pixel ROM or a stock Android ROM onto these phones any phone that has treble support uh, but that uh, that sort of link where they've been working on the GSI for this image from the pixel has been discontinued now that we have actual ROMs for this phone that are specifically for this device so I thought why not go ahead and actually do a video on one of those so today uh, what I'm going to be showing you is OmniROM um, and let's go ahead and take a look at that uh, first of all I just want to make sure that it's clear that everything works on this ROM so it's uh, as you can see I have all my apps installed over here and I've been using it basically as my daily driver so nothing is broken um, nothing doesn't work we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, mobile data, location, everything basically 100% functional, calls, messages, uh, everything is fixed. Cameras, I'd I'll talk about in a bit, but yeah, the camera works perfectly, especially if you have the right apps installed, and I'll talk about that in, in a second. But before any of that, let's first go ahead and just verify that this is, in fact, um, Android 9.0, Android Pi. So as you can see, it's upgraded to Android 9.0, and... Uh, let me just go ahead and show you guys that we're running OmniROM. Uh, the thing about OmniROM is because it's a homemade version, it's an unofficial homemade version, you can't really get OTAs to it. So it'll tell you that it's not possible to get an OTA. Um, these, these builds usually come out daily, so if you want to update it, you can just dirty flash it on top of what you already have. So uh, like I said, this is everything you want to know. Um, quick note. If my phone seems to just look like it's running a little faster than what you guys will get if you flash it, that's only because I keep animations at 0 0.5 instead of the default one. So if it looks like things are flying, that's just because I don't like waiting for animations. Um, but I don't turn them off either. And if also the display looks a little bigger, that's only because I like to use up a lot of my uh, display space. So instead of having it set to default and then just having, you know, like a really big nav bar, I like to turn it down to have um, a small nav bar and then I crank the font up to large so that it looks kind of readable. Uh, other than that, I think, I, uh, like I said, everything basically works. Now this is the launcher. Let's give you a quick overview, first of all, of this launcher where you can swipe up and a short swipe up will make you come to your uh, recents from the bar and basically from any application then. So let's say you're on um, the camera, for example. Uh, a short swipe up will make you go to your recent apps and then a long swipe up will let you access that um, app draw from basically any application. Now that f that long swipe from anywhere to reach the app draw will change if you change your default launcher. So because I'm trying to show you the functionality of Android 9.0, I haven't switched to Nova Launcher, though I do prefer it. I don't think there's ever really a use case where you want to immediately jump into your app draw from basically any screen. Um, apart from that, this doesn't really let you swipe left into your Google Now feed, um, which is a little weird. I think there's a companion app you can install and then it works, but I really haven't been able to find it. Um, the alternative Android 9.0 ROM available for this device right now, which is Nitrogen OS, does have, I think, in my opinion, a much better like pixel launcher scene going on. Uh, this ROM has like really weird squared icons. Like right now I've changed. Um, let me just show you, my bad. Let me just show you, I have, change these icons to circle but usually they're like in a square format and just looks a little strange nitrogen has that uh fixed as well but i just think overall omni rom the rom the rom that i'm running right now is better it's a more cleaner rom than nitrogen in a lot of ways nitrogen os has um more customization features but i also think it looks a little messy and like you know they sort of brand uh the fact that it's nitrogen everywhere and there's like these uh, data traffic speeds up in the status bar that I couldn't find out how to like disable. So I think both these ROMs, which are the two main ROMs right now that are out for this device running Android Pi, 
are both really really good roms completely stable i've used both of them for over a week and i saw myself coming back to omni rom in seven hydrogen but either or there's not really that much difference let's go ahead and show you some of the features that are specific to omni rom so there's omni gears uh, in style here, what you can do is, well, there's wallpapers here, which basically every ROM allows you, and then there's themes. And so here, there are a few themes, and then you can customize it. So what I've done is basically just changed this the default accent, which is this, like, ugly teal, to the pixel one and applied it, which is why you can see that my system and everything is in pixel blue as, about, as opposed to, like, uh, the stock teal. Some of the other stuff we have, like device features, is ambient display. Um, so ambient display is basically, let me just try to pick up my device to show you. Uh, that can work. It basically senses it. There we go. Um, so if you pick up your device or if you get a new notification, that's what ambient display looks like. It'll tell you the time and it'll tell you the day and date. Um, apart from that, you can change your um, lock screen weather condition. If you want that to be shown on your lock screen, you can do that. Uh, system UI tuner, a bunch of other things. You can change which shortcuts show up on your lock screen. By default, those are usually call and camera. Uh, so these are just a bunch of other customizations that are specific to this ROM. This ROM also has its own gesture. So if you disable this nav bar, um, then what you can do is, as you can see, it goes back their sort of gestures that are a little different so if you can read that back is a swipe from the left and uh, swipe up the center and hold takes you to your recent so it's like the iPhone one I prefer obviously what uh, Android 9.0 has just because it's stock Android and its implementation is a little better I do think it's a little weird that we still have a back arrow even though we have gestures enabled uh, also this isn't necessarily enabled by default so when you go in you'll actually have this turned off and you'll have these like pixel bars but if you want to move to the gestures you can just turn on swipe up on home which is the sub menu that you want to turn on the option in the sub menu you want to turn on if you want these gestures right there's a bunch of other gestures so you know double tap to reach your camera i don't have a default set well let's just say um we make this it it's a good segue to start talking about the camera like I had said earlier because I've already shown you guys around um, the ROM more or less. Uh, I'd like to also note that you know everything has sort of been changed into more material UI so more apps are suddenly following Google's material UI guidelines and stuff like that. Um, but yeah I think it's time we should talk about the camera so they give us and this is a little frustrating because they have a lot of duplicate apps in OmniROM which again isn't there in Nitrogen's OS, so if that pisses you off, you might want to consider Nitrogen OS. Like I've said, both those ROMs are really fantastic. So you go into Messaging, and this is actually the default app, and then I switched to this one, because this one had like a Material UI, and this is actually the Google Messaging app, and this must be like the Omni-ROM version of it. Um, yeah, so like I was saying, they ship this ROM, I don't, well not ship, but they created this ROM with two cameras, and this is one like really basic camera and it's kind of crappy, it doesn't really help with anything, but if you want like a basic camera that'll just sort of click a photo, it does that. And then they have this one, which I think is like um, an MIUI ROM port. And I think this is a really good camera because it does have a lot of features like portrait, square, panorama, and stuff like that. Um, and the main camera also has AI, so it'll detect like scenes, um, if you know if you're taking a photo scenery or food something it'll detect it and then boost the image processing or the image saturation uh based on what it thinks it's looking at and how it look good um so yeah i the reason i think this is like an miui rom port is because of the ai and also if you take a photo and you go into the gallery it basically says like shot on the memix 2 which is pretty much what that annoying stock camera app used to say uh, so yeah, these are the two camera apps that are sort of built in and then you obviously, you know, anyone that wants really good photos taken will go ahead and still install the Google camera app and uh, the version that works the best on this ROM and on this device overall on most ROMs is Arnova's version 8.3 B1 or something. I'll have the APK obviously linked in the description below, but um, this is a great, great uh, camera app. I mean, I think this is definitely the one that you should be using on a daily basis and we have slow motion working um we have stuff like 
uh, lens blur, panorama, and you know, basically all the major functions. And we also have AR stickers. Now, uh, that option won't come up unless you install two applications. There are guidelines on like the GCAM mod page on how to get those AR application, those uh, AR stickers to work. And I tried a lot to get it to work. It said something like, you know, flash these two ROMs because uh, I'll show you what the problem is to begin with. So once you flash two APKs that they tell you to, not flash, but once you install two APKs that they tell you to install, which is the AR Core 1.4 because the 1.5 isn't supported yet by these G. Uh, Gcam mods and then the AR stickers this option starts showing up on your Google camera uh, When you click on it though, it'll say the update is required and there's really nothing you can do about it And to fix that on the official page it says sort of uh, you know flash this in DWRP if this doesn't work flash this in DWRP and I sort of did all that and I really couldn't figure it out uh, until I actually stumbled upon uh, a different way of fixing this and I actually did that on the essential phone, which is the PH1's XDA forum, where one guy had sort of given me a guide on how to do it. Um, actually, it was in, on one of the Magisk modules uh, about the PH1's camera. So um, anyway, the, the way to do this is you first want your device to be rooted if you want to enable these AR stickers, right? So you want to go to the basically the root of your device, and then you want to go to data. You want to hit data again, so like data and then data. And you want to go down to com.android.ar. So uh, let me just. Sorry, not com.android.ar, com.google.ar. So it'll be under all these Androids. Uh, it'll be under com.google.ar. So you have this, then you want to go into files and you want to go into device two profiles. Device one profiles is basically empty, I think. Yeah, so you want to go into device two profiles. And what this is is basically. It's a list of all the uh, all the phones that um, are compatible with AR Core, and you can see there's like uh, also numbers. Those are the Android versions that that phone is compatible with AR Core in, right? So it's really easy to fix this. What you want to do is just find a device that has like colon and then Android 9 because this ROM is an Android 9 ROM. If you want to try doing this on Lineage, then basically the same thing for an Android 8 or an Android 8.1 version and then you just want to rename this so you know diamond is basically the code name for pixel 2 xl so i think this phone resembles the pixel 2 xl uh pretty similarly so instead of diamond you just want to put in Chirin or kiran or whatever it is because that's the code name for this device i think you've been on xda uh many times you would know that and when you're downloading roms and things like that for that you would know that Chirin is the code name for that um once you have this you want to just close the applications and then you want to go into that camera app and then if you use AR stickers you should basically have it so there we go the AR stickers work um, finding a flat surface right now is still going to be a little bit of an issue I'm just trying to sh prove to you that it does work um, but you know point being you can have this sort of stormtrooper show up and you can have uh, this bird basically Basically, uh, I don't have enough space to show you this, but the AR stickers work and they work perfectly. You can use those sort of app measurement, uh, like distance measurement AR core applications and basically all the AR core compatible applications once you have um, gone ahead and changed uh, the name of the device with that. So that's another thing that I thought was interesting to add to this video. So that So we have three cameras, two messaging apps, which is annoying. Uh, again, like I said, to do this AR sticker mod, you will need to be rooted, and I'm rooted through Magisk because I like systemless root. Uh, I guess hopefully you're um, adequately impressed by this ROM, and if you do actually want to go ahead and flash it, let me just take you through the process of doing that. Now, it's not really just as easy as wiping and then um, installing the ROM. There's a few extra files you want to go ahead and do. Um, before that, you do want to wipe basically everything except your internal storage so you make a wipe of that and that should happen pretty quickly um, then you want to go back and you want to install um, the, the firmware again I have all these files linked in the description below so you don't need to worry about finding where to get them but basically you want to install this firmware first happens fairly quickly after which you want to install dex script Again, super fast update. Um, these are just things that if you're going from a lower version of 
Android to the upper one, it just helps make the process smooth. I think uh, there's a fix for volt calling as well, uh, like voice LTE calling as well. Um, after you're done with those two, you want to just flash either your choice of Nitrogen OS or Omni. Like I said, I've tried both of them. I think both of them are really fantastic. Um, what I showed you was OmniRom, so let's go ahead and do OmniRom. This will take a minute. Um, it's a ROM that's flashing, so it's not going to be as quick as the other ones. But again, it doesn't really take as long as I've seen some uh, ROMs take to flash. So it just patches this system image unconditionally. I should note that you want to have the latest version of TWRP installed. So if you don't, you want to download the system image for that and flash it as an image. Um, I'll show you just that I am running the latest version of TWRP. Um, so if you go back, this is the latest one officially available for the Memex 2, that's 3.2.30, available for Chirun, which is the code name like I mentioned earlier. So once you've done the firmware and the deck script and then you've installed the ROM, you want to fix voice LTE, you can flash that voice LTE fix. Uh, after that, if you want, you can install uh, OpenG apps. This is a pretty big G app file, like a large one, so it'll take a while to flash. Um, so I'm not going to do it right now. I'm just going to show you that it does, in fact, boot. So we're just going to reboot into the system. Um, so one thing that's really good about this ROM is that, as opposed to like the semi-GSI, I want to mention that it's a completely stable ROM, so it doesn't crash at all. And this is something that used to happen with the GSI, right? Um, the ROM would keep crashing and there would be random reboots unless you set the display size or something and things like that. None of that is uh, really happening on these. These are super stable ROMs. As you can see, for a first boot, that was extremely, extremely fast. So yeah, like I was saying, um, you know, I've unlocked the phone as well. Uh, for a first boost, that was really fast. I believe if you probably have G apps installed, it'll take a little longer to boot. It won't be as, quite as quick as this was. Uh, as you can see by default, you don't have that gesture enabled. You'll have to go into settings and fix all of that. Another thing um, I mentioned, like rooting via Magisk before. If you do want to do that, uh, don't do it on the first boot. So you want to install the firmware, then you want to install the deck script, then you want to install your ROM, you want to install the voice LTE uh, zip, you want to install G apps, you can do all that in that sequence in the first boot. But if you want to install Magisk, first boot into the device, probably set it up using G apps or whatever. And then in your second boot or like any of the later boots, uh, go back into TWRP and sort of flash that Magisk um, zip. Uh, again, yeah, just a final note, this is easier than it was to flash the GSI as well, besides just being a more stable ROM. Um, and you know, not having uh, crashes and stuff. The GSI required you to format your data. This doesn't. So if you have like internal storage and things like that, uh, you don't need to get rid of them. Obviously you will have to wipe like, um, if you're running lineage, if you're running MIUI, you will have to wipe like your data, which is like all your apps and settings and things like that. Obviously, since you're upgrading to an unofficial and different version of Android, uh, but you don't have to lose any of your pictures, you don't have to lose any of your documents, any of your videos and things like that that you have saved up. Any chat backup or anything you have, um, you can easily uh, just boot into this device and then still have access to all of that. So uh, that was just my quick, um, you know, maybe not so quick review of uh, Android 9.0 running stable and running completely normally, totally suitable for a daily driver on the Mi Mix 2. Let me know what you guys think of this video, and if you liked it, leave a like and consider subscribing. Thank you.